To conclude this module, let's go to the field and hear what other firefighters are saying about fireline leadership. If I were to ask you to do something, for example, um, I'm going to be weighing the big picture and I'm going to be weighing what our objectives are and, and of course I'm going to want to try and keep you safe and I'm going to want to try and do all the things to make sure that we're going to get the, the job accomplished and we're all going to go home at night and uh, everything's going to be kosher. But when I tell you that this is what we need to get done, I need to trust that you've been through the NWCG courses, that uh, the task book that was initiated by your supervisor uh, means that you're qualified to do that position. And once I ask you to do that, in my opinion, the accountability is also needs to be on your shoulders. You accept, accept that assignment, at that point, that's when you are accountable for your actions. And we can only do so much with the individuals that we work with. Um, we can give them the best guidance that we can, but we can't explain everything to the letter. If we, if we took the time to do that, we wouldn't get anything done. That's why we need to, to count, uh, count on our training and uh, count on the, the way the system is supposed to work. And that's the way it is. I think every agency should be accountable for their own, their own folks. You get on a fire and you order up a division, superintendent or a, a strike team leader or a crew boss, that, that organization is accountable for the training that that personnel got. You can have a guy who worked for 10 years as a firefighter but uh, doesn't really have that much experience. Years don't count. It's what they actually did on the, for those years. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Just because your first year don't mean, you know, that a IC Type 4 or even IC Type 3, you know, they may forget about stuff. And the smallest things, you know, getting back to basics, I kind of compare it to being a medic. You know, uh, paramedics save lives, but EMTs save paramedics. You get back to the basics, and um, you as a first year or first timer at IC Type 4, you know, make sure you take uh, suggestions for what they're worth. Um, and just don't blow them off. Um, they may see things that you don't see. You know, you may be in the heat of the battle, your adrenaline's pumping and you got those blinders on, you know, take suggestions from your uh, fellow firefighters. If it be a first year, if it be 20 year, take those suggestions. And that's one thing I do stress to our folks at in Warm Springs. I don't believe a, a good leader can make a good decision every time. Um, you know, whether right, wrong, or indifferent, um, good leaders are gonna make mistakes. I think what what makes a good leader though is that that person is going to evaluate the mistake that was made and reassess and fix the problem and then move on. Not dwell on it, um, fix it, move on. What we're trying to do is incorporate a lot more stacks, um, you know, sand table exercises. We're, we're trying to incorporate the L381, the instant leadership where you've got role players, um, an observer group, a role player group, a hot seat group, and, and those folks all have to go through it um, where they, they become more comfortable dealing with um, emerging fires and things like that. And so I think it's really easy to do at the district level. I mean, we're, we're incorporating, for example, the, the 10 and 18 into a role player type scenario where our 10 and 18, you know, it can last a full day, for example. And you've always got to have um, the fire orders, watch out situations, downhill line construction, you know, risk management processes, on and on and on. You've always got to be evaluating and reevaluating those processes um, throughout the course of a day. Being a student of fire means you love to fight fire and you want to see the the science and the practice, the art of fighting fire advance and you want to learn from your everyday experience and share that with people in the field and that's what uh, a lot of what fire training should be about, not just a, another four hours that you have to take between coffee breaks kind of thing.